Welcome to Research 101. I'm your teacher, Ms. Ram, or Mrs. Buds. I'm teaching research subjects for senior high school, particularly research in daily life 1 and 2. In this short video, we will answer what are the different types of quantitative research, their definitions, distinctions, and similarities. However, we will only look at the most common and most used types of quantitative research. Start with survey. It is mainly quantitative for it uses a large sample size. It is intended to acquire information concerning predominance, distribution, and interrelation of variables. Look at different samples of survey. This one is a survey on the favored presidential candidate for 2022. In this type of survey, the researchers are looking at the predominant candidate or person that a certain population favors. Another example is a customer satisfaction survey wherein the researchers will only look into the participant's perception of a certain product or service. Another common type of quantitative research is a descriptive one. It is designed to give answers to the questions of who, what, when, and how. It is used to only describe what exists and gather information about the current status of a certain phenomenon. There are sample research questions that are used for a descriptive study. What is the frequency of utilization of Facebook app among SHS students? What is the level of academic performance among grade 12 students? What is the ratio of female to male in an engineering class? Now, here are some tips on how to easily spot a descriptive quantitative research. The research questions almost always begins with what is the frequency, what is the level, what is the ratio, or what is the average. Another is that the treatments used are basically descriptive statistics such as frequency, distribution, mean, median, mode, average, and percentage. The third type of quantitative research is experimental. It identifies the cause and effect relationship between and among variables. In this type of research, the researchers control the situation which allows them to answer the question, what causes something to occur? To determine if it is an experimental quantitative research, you can check for the presence of control and treatment groups and manipulation of variables. Example of an experimental quantitative research is that of determining the test scores of students. One group took the test in a quiet and calm environment, while the other group took the test in a very loud and noisy environment. Another example is that of determining the effectiveness of a certain treatment. One group is given the medicine or a treatment while the other group was given the placebo effect or none at all. Fourth type is correlational quantitative. It is based on pairs of measures or scores. It provides an indication of the strength of the relationship between two or more variables. An example of a research question for a correlational study is that of is there a significant relationship between the frequency of playing Mobile Legends and academic performance among senior high school students. Take note of the term significant relationship. This is the basic and main research question for a correlational quantitative study. As to the treatment, Correlational studies use inferential statistics such as Pearson R and Spearman. Fifth and last type of quantitative research is that of causal comparative. It describes existing conditions and finds out the causes of the existing phenomena. It proves cause-effect relationships and is considered a kind of descriptive research and likened to experimental and correlational researches. Sample research question for causal comparative study, is there a significant difference between the recovery of patients who took the medicine and patients who took the placebo effect? 
another example of a research question. What is the significant effect of playing Mobile Legends to the level of academic performance among senior high school students? Take note of the terms difference and effect as these are the most commonly used questions for a causal comparative study. As to the treatment, causal comparative studies also use inferential statistics. Commonly used are Z-test, T-test, Chi-test, and analysis of variance or ANOVA. To have a better understanding of these types of quantitative research, let's look into their distinctions and similarities. Let's start with the descriptive. It's the most common one and can be used together with all the other types. If the researcher wants to describe the findings of an experiment, then it can be a descriptive experimental. If the researcher wants to describe the relationship among variables, then that's a descriptive correlational. And if the researcher wants to describe the cause and effect among variables, then it can be a descriptive causal comparative. To avoid confusion, let's look into the similarities and differences of these types. Let's start with experimental versus causal comparative. Both looks into the cause and effect. However, experimental uses experimentation while causal comparative has no experimentation. As mentioned, experimentation utilizes control and treatment groups or manipulation of variables. Whereas in causal comparative, data are treated using statistics to determine the cause and effect. Next is correlational versus causal comparative. Both looks into two or more variables. However, for correlational, it looks into the relationships. For causal comparative, it studies the cause and effect. Next is correlational versus experimental. Both looks into two or more variables. However, for correlational, there is no manipulation of data and it looks into the relationships. Whereas, experimental research manipulates variables and determines the cause and effects. So, that's it. These are the different types of quantitative research. I hope you learned from this video and if you do, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have other questions, you can reach me through my Instagram at the underscore learning underscore mama or follow me on my Facebook page, The Learning Mama. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. See you on the next tutorial. Bye!